Hi, this is Mrs. Farouk, and today we'll talk about cell organelles. Uh, we spoke to, uh, in class about prokaryotic cell versus eukaryotic cell. So basically now we're going to do is look at eukaryotic cells and the key structures in eukaryotic cells. And then uh, talk about differences between the plant cell and the animal cell. Now, basically, let's categorize the organelles into four uh, basic functions. Uh, one, the nucleus and the ribosomes are basically involved in the genetic control of the cell. And two, endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi body, lysosomes, vacuoles, those organelles are involved in manufacturing or breaking down molecules. And the mitochondria <coughs> in, in all cells and chloroplasts and plast cells are involved in energy processing. And then our fourth category are our structural organelles that are involved in support, movement, and communication between cells. And that's the plasma membrane, cytoskeleton, and the cell wall. Now the nucleus and the ribosome. Now the nucleus is called control center because it has a recipe to make proteins. And when a cell needs a protein, that DNA is activated, and then trans that recipe is transcribed to a molecule called messenger RNA, which then leaves the nucleus and goes to the ribosome to make that particular protein. So that's how it controls the activities of the cell. So if you look here, here's your nucleus, and you see this dark area? That's called the nucleolus, and that's where the um, uh, ribosomal RNA is made. And this nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear envelope with pores, and this is where the mRNA will pass through. And if you see all this dark matter, and this dark matter is called chromatin, and chromatin is what, how DNA is packed. So DNA is loosely packed, in this case, as chromatin. Okay. And then continuous with this nuclear envelope is a, a membrane and this series of membranes called endoplasmic reticulum and this endoplasmic reticulum has these ribosomes. So again the nucleus, here's a picture under the microscope, here's a nucleus and here's a closer picture of the nuclear pore. Okay. Now the nucleus, again, is the cell's genetic control center, and the nucleolus is the site of ribosomal RNA synthesis, and this is how it looks like uh, under an electron microscope. Okay. Now ribosomes are a site of protein synthesis. This is where the mRNA that has a recipe for the protein goes out of the nucleus to the ribosome. So the ribosome is pictured like a hamburger with two parts, and this ribbon here represents messenger RNA. And this messenger RNA has that recipe for that protein. So amino acids come and assemble according to this recipe, and then out you get a polypeptide. And if you remember, polypeptide is a polymer for protein. And the monomer, each little bead here represents an amino acid. Okay. Now the second uh, compartment is what we call the endomembrane system and is a series of organelles involved in biosynthesis and degradation. And we have several of these. So here, uh, this series here is called the ER and as soon as the protein is made, um, it goes out wrapped in a package in a vesicle, and the vesicle is shipped to this Golgi body, and the Golgi body will further chemically modify that protein, and then package it and send it out to the cell. So basically a vesicle is just a, a sac surrounded by <coughs> cell membrane. And again, they function together to produce or store and export molecules. Here's a closer look. So the ER is a continuous from the nuclear envelope, and here's the ribosomes. Now the small DR does not have ribosomes. Um, it's where lipids and steroids um, 
synthesize and also some proteins. It's also where it's a detox area where uh, some toxics are degraded. <coughs> now the rough ER again here as soon as the ribosome produces the protein the rough ER has these ribosomes and the ribosomes would enter the cavity or lumen that lumen it means empty space within the ER and here the protein would get folded chemically modified and then sh and then packaged in this vesicle and this vesicle basically takes it then to the Golgi apparatus to get further processed. And then once it gets to the Golgi apparatus, it'll get further chemically modified and then packaged and sent to its uh, particular location. It could be out the cell or within the cell. The lysosome is also like in a vesicle, it's surrounded by a membrane. And this is where um, you wanna take a polymer, degrade it and recycle and put it back into monomers. So here, for example, you have a food vacuole, you want to digest these items. The lysosome um, would fuse with this vacuole and it will release these enzymes and break it down. So basically, lysosome isolates particular areas so it can do its reactions and it has enzymes. And if these enzymes were just floating in the cytoplasm, it would just mess up the cell. Okay. Now vacuoles, again, think of it as a bag of a, a sack, and a vacuole can have many functions. For example, here is a par uh, paramecium, and it lives in fresh water, so it pumps out water, and it's called a contractile vacuole. Some vacuoles store water, store, store food, uh, pigments, so they have a variety of functions depending on what cell. And for example, a fat cell would have a fat vacuole, and so forth. Now in plants, vacuoles have a major um, function. Here you see a central vacuole, and basically what's in here is water. And water basically supports that cell and keep, uh, maintains its structure. Some plants might have food or toxins or poisons that protect the plant. Okay, now the major two organelles for energy are your mitochondria, and your chloroplast. Now notice they also, it's like a sac surrounded by a membrane. Now what's really neat about mitochondria and chloroplast, it has its own DNA. And within each one, it has a series of membranes which increase surface area. Now on the surface area, you have a lot of um, reactions happening. Now if you remember, cell respiration occurs in the mitochondria. That's why we call it the powerhouse. It's called the powerhouse because it breaks down the sugar. That sugar is broken down uh, to energy and our energy molecule is ATP. So that's why it's called the powerhouse. And ATP what, is what you use to do cellular work. So if you look at closely at the mitochondria, it's got an outer membrane, an inner membrane, and that inner membrane is further fo folded. And so here you have many reactions separated by membranes. And also if you look at photosynthesis, it too is composed of parts with a lot of membranes and again separates those series of reactions that it takes to make food. Now the cytoskeleton cell surfaces uh, they're made up of something called microtubules or microfilaments, intermediate filaments. These are all proteins <coughs> that help move and maintain the shape of the cell. So think of a scaffolding as a cytoskeleton that supports the cell shape. It's not just a blob liquid that's called <coughs> cytoplasm. Now cilia is also a microtubule, it's found uh, attached outside of the cell membrane. And it's basically hair-like structures that moves in a whip-like motion. So example, you have cilia in the lining of your respiratory tract that keeps dirt and other things away uh, from your lungs. And you get that cough when you have mucus stuck. Now the flagellum is also a microtubule but the whip-like motion allows a cell to move. And centrioles are also a uh, type of microtubules that are involved in cell division. And these guys are not found in plants, 
but you'll only find, found, uh, find centrioles in animal cells. And lastly, the cell membrane is the main structure that maintains homeostasis because it allows things to go in and out. And by controlling what goes in and out, um, it's the, what we saw, say the gateway of the cell. And it's composed of all the of carbs, lipids, and proteins. The major component here, as you see, is the bilayer, right? If you remember this, our favorite lipid, phospholipid. And then we have proteins that act like gates or channels. And then we have cholesterol that give the cell membrane its rigidity. So here's a little detailed picture of the cell membrane. Here is our proteins, our two layers of phospholipid. Notice the tails face each other, and you got the phospholipids pointing in the outside. And here's our cytoskeleton. And outside the cell, you have ex what's called extracellular matrix, which is come come out of glycoprotein, collagen, connecting glycoproteins that connect cells, and all that. And then our cell wall. Our cell wall gives the plant cell its rigidity and is composed of carb, a starch called cellulose. Okay. Um, and then also notice within the cell wall you have these pores called uh, a plasma desma. So, so these cells can communicate with each other. So again, um, this is a really good chart that kind of um, summarizes all the cell parts. And again, I'll put this PowerPoint on Blackboard. So if you look at the cell here, I added some pictures. So anyway, the the cell, uh, this should remind you of what? The cell wall. The gateway to the cell is our cell membrane. The control center is our nucleus. Whip-like structure, the flagella. The storage unit, the vacuole. Powerhouse, the mitochondria. Scaffolding, cytoskeleton. Uh, converts light energy to uh, chemical energy. Photosynthesis happens here, chloroplast. Our ribosomes assembles proteins. Our packaging unit it processes it. It's Golgi apparatus or Golgi body. Our transport areas like our rough ER, our smooth ER. Our place that recycles, so it takes those polymers and converts it to monomers is our lysosome. The hair-like structure, cilia. Okay, uh, and that should conclude our um, screencast on organelles. And I'll have these pictures on the PowerPoint so you can practice labeling and identifying e cell part in an animal cell and a plant cell. Now. One thing I forgot is let's compare the plant cell and the animal cell. So here's an animal cell. Notice it doesn't have that central vacuole like the plant cell here. Number four is our vacuole. So our animal cell, um, again, you have the nucleus, the nuclear pores, and here's your rough ER with the dots. Smiley faces, our Golgi body, our mitochondria that looks like sausage, and our vacuoles. And here surrounding it is our cell membrane. And inside our nucleus, don't forget, is a nucleolus. The chromatin is in our nucleus. And then this star shape is like a cross section. That's the centrioles right there. Now, if you look at our plant cell, this is the central vacuole. These green things is our chloroplast, our cell wall, mitochondria, the Golgi apparatus, and of course, all suspended in the cytoplasm.